Fighting the struggle to have independence for Biafra. We are fighting for independence, not fighting physically with guns and, and bullets. We are fighting in terms of our agitation. We are fighting in terms of our belief. We are fighting in terms of our consistency to ensure that we are free. Because we are not free. As a free people, we can afford to make life better for our people. Right now, we can't do that because of how Nigeria is structured and because of the very flawed foundations upon which Nigeria rests. You called for a referendum latest this year, uh, November, you said, I think. Yes. Uh, if that doesn't happen, what's the way forward? Because the way it looks like the government will definitely uh, not agree to that. Then there'll be no elections in Biafra land. No more elections here. They can put whoever they like in office. They can do whatever they like with their political positions. We will not engage in any political process. You said it's a peaceful struggle, but... Yes. Uh, there are some videos of you appearing in the past, especially abroad, in particular in one conference in, in the U.S., where you said you need weapons to defend yourself, you need guns and ammunition. How can we understand that in the context that you're saying it's a peaceful struggle? I'm sure you've heard about the Fulani headsmen killing people all over the place. Have you heard about it? Of course. Exactly. 
So how do you intend to defend yourself against felony headsmen without guns and bullets? They'll be killing our people, raping our women, destroying crops and the farms, and no one does anything about it. Is that how human beings are supposed to live? So, and you have the right to arm yourself and defend yourself with arms in that context? Self-defense is recognized even by all the known laws of the UN. Is that not correct? We have the right. If somebody were to badge into this very interview and are wielding a machete or an AK-47, are you suggesting we should let them get away with it? You were detained for almost two years, yes, uh, from, from 2015 on, uh, and actually there was no trial. No trial ever happened, uh, yes. and despite several court rulings that said you were supposed to be released, you were not released. Yes. Do you think you were treated in a fair way by the government, or rather also by the justice system? No, not fairly, because Nigeria is not a civilized country. People will behave like animals. They are not reasonable enough. They are not disciplined enough. They are not mentally developed enough to run a transparent civil society. For them, they have a feudal mindset where you have the ruling class and, you know, a multitude of poverty-stricken people who never utters any word in rebellion or to even ask questions about their plight. That is one thing we are determined to challenge. Don't you think you insult a lot of Nigerians with that? I'm being very kind, to be honest. I could have used far more harsher words to describe them. I'm being very kind. So generally, you don't think very positive of your countrymen, then, obviously? They are not... When you say positive, not as individuals, perhaps there are a few good people amongst them. But as a collective, this is an absolute mess. And you can see for yourself. You look through the roads and see how horrible they are. Didn't you see how unkept everywhere is? How filthy and dirty everywhere is? That is the product of a Nigerian system that is uniquely backwards, even by the very third world standards of black Africa. That's the fact, and people must face up to it. Well, I traveled in the north quite extensively, and I went to very remote areas sometimes uh, where you would still find evil people living there, peaceful together with communities in the north. Don't you sometimes think that you might endanger their peaceful coexistence with the communities there, that they might get into trouble with that? So if they're living so peacefully together, or cohabiting so peacefully, as you put it, how come you hear about all those uprisings in the north where southern Christians are being slaughtered and nothing gets done about it? Are you telling me that that is normal? People are in the north out of a dare need, necessity more or less, to try and survive. Because here, the entire production process has been emasculated by people and policies that are geared towards ensuring that our people exist in a perpetual state of poverty. And that is unacceptable to us. What we're asking the world to recognize is that we want to live in peace. Not in pieces. We want to live in peace just to allow us to be. Allow Biafra to exist. We were existing before the British came. Just allow us to go back to, you know, what we were before. No African came to Europe to create countries. So for somebody to just come in here and say, you, 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 from today, your name is Nigeria, is simply laughable. Yes. Um, this, this, is actually, uh, this is actually the first time I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on the internet for something like this or putting a video out there. I'm just quickly gonna, you know, talk about this uh, Inam Dikanu, IPOB, Nigerian situation going on. I recently watched a video, I saw Nigerian soldiers, you know, maltreating um, supposedly IPOB members, then lay them down inside gutter, made them to drink dirty water. They actually shot some of those people. My guy, the, the question is, all this fight about I want Biafra, we want Biafra, we do this. Oh, now the can no go follow on a go enter war front. Oh, now the can no go follow on a go enter war front, my brother. Think about it this way. Since when I be young, since when my great grandfather, our fathers then been young, now we don't hear say Nigeria go better, Nigeria go better. People they read newspaper they say Nigeria go better, Nigeria go better. The thing no better. Now I understand your frustration. You want Biafra because most of the resources. Coming out of Nigeria is coming from your land, according to the according to geography. 
So this is why you people want Biafra. We get it because you feel like the uh, you know present administration is not doing anything for you guys. I have no problem about that. But the thing is, why is it getting to the extent of war? Why on a one would they face Nigerian soldiers? Aboki, I will say people we know the year come, go. Now I won't go the face. They go kill you and finish. If you remember, the, if you remember, uh, what was it called? Oduku time. People died. Nigerian government seized importation of food into the east. All oh, everybody get big head, the small leg. What did they, they call that sickness? Kwashoko. Kwashoko. My brother, this is where they start now. Kwashoko. Now that one won't die. So if you, if you claiming, okay, if you're saying that you're a youth, you're like in your 30s when you're 35. If you're tired of a country, if you're tired of Nigeria, the only thing you need to do, brother, the only thing you need to do is look for a way to get the hell out of that country and start a new life somewhere else. If you go abroad, I know it's very difficult for some people to you know, just say, say, just come out, they go abroad, say, you know, they're easy. I know everybody to wait they abroad, they eat better for. But if you go abroad, at least you could still live a better life than saying you live frustrated, say, you won't go to fight one war for one kind in Biafra. My brother, now war won't save you. Hey, you want to you want you now when they do face off with be uh, Nigerian soldiers. Um, if you no one get, get sense, my brother, I receive sense in the name of God. I pity you. 